night at Fenway Park, the Tigers had a heap of trouble with the Red Sox. Boston right fielder Danny Heap had three hits and drove in three runs. Despite a 12-hit attack, the Tigers lost their third in a row, 8-7 to the Bow Sox. Tonight, Frank Tanana with a 12-7 career record against the Red Sox faces Mike Boddicker, 3-10 lifetime against Detroit. It's the Tigers and the Red Sox next. Tigers baseball is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch. We brew our fine quality beers to be enjoyed responsibly. Remember, know when to say when. And presented by your Greater Michigan and Metro Detroit Ford dealers where their commitment to quality makes them number one. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Fenway Park in Boston. I'm George Kell, along with Al Kaline. It's game number two of this three-game series. The Tigers lost one last night that went on and on and on, a four-hour ball game. They lost it by a run, and tonight they'll send Frank Tanana out to try to get even in this series. A good crowd on hand, and they are standing now at Fenway Park. Holly Wolf will be presenting the colors. I'd like you to rise. Please sing as John Kylie plays our national anthem. the playing of our national anthem we're just about ready to go at Fenway Park and we'll be right back after these words okay here's the batting lineup for the Tigers leading off and playing center field Gary Pettis batting second Dave Bergman at first base the third batter, Lou Whitaker, is playing second base. The fourth batter, playing third base tonight, Keith Moreland. Batting fifth, the DH, Matt Noakes. The sixth batter in left field is Pat Sheridan. Batting seventh, Chet Lemon in right field. The eighth batter, the catcher, Mike Heath. And batting ninth, playing shortstop, Mike Brumley. Defensively, for the Red Sox, Greenwell, Burks, and Kutcher in the outfield. Boggs, Rivera, Reed, Assassi, and Sarone behind the plate. And Mike Boddicker on the mound for the Red Sox. Uh, Mike has a, a record of three wins and five losses. He is three and ten lifetime against the Tigers. Now, this, uh, this Tiger team's hard to figure out. You think they might have an easy time with Mike. First pitch is a ball to Gary Pettis. Gary Pettis, Dave Bergman, and Lou Whitaker will be the batters. Boggs in very close at third base for Pettis. And Asaski's been very close. Ball two, no strikes. Gary made the final out of the game last night, but he's been hitting the ball very hard. Ball two, strike one. Mike Boddicker ready, and the pitch is fouled away. That'll even the count at two and two. It's a cloudy, overcast evening here in Back Bay. Much better than last night, where we had a drizzle of rain throughout the ball game. The weatherman says it'll be raining again late tonight and most of tomorrow. 
but we should be able to get this one in without any trouble. All three strike two to the leadoff man. Everybody moving back a few steps and the three two pitch. Gout. Right into the crowd and. The youngster trying to catch it and was hit. I think the fellow in front of him got a glove up in front of him. Yeah, to try to catch the ball. It went right between his hand and hit him in the face. Oh, a vicious line drive that was caught. Mike Boddicker makes a tremendous play on a vicious line drive. Well, Pettis has been hitting the ball so hard and hitting a lot of line drives up the middle. Boddicker, a good fielding pitcher, who has great form on the mound. He doesn't fall one way or the other, and he squares up and makes a fine play. We'll bring up Bergman. David had a couple of hits in last night's game. In the last two ball games, the Tigers have had 26 hits, and 25 of those, Al, have been singles. Yeah, the only home run was uh, Ward's home run in Toronto. Yeah, the only extra base hit. Here's a pop-up on the infield. Maybe the left fielder Greenwell. Yeah, he'll come in and pick it up. So Dave Bergman is out. Out number two in the first inning, and the batter will be Lou Whitaker. Now you don't see any, too many fly balls drop in in left field, particularly if they're high fly balls, uh, unless an outfielder or infielder slips. Uh, they, they're just too close together out in that field. Whitaker batting at 271. He has 14 home runs and 36 runs batted in. And he hits it foul. One strike to Lou. Tigers have lost a couple of tough ones the last two outings, both one run ball games. Well, Sparky Anderson had a closed door meeting before the game today uh, before batting practice. Uh, no one knows which is the way it should be what was said in the meeting. But I don't believe he was too happy with the way the Tigers played last night. A lot of mistakes. It's a ball and a strike to Whitaker and a breaking ball low makes it ball two. Yeah, we have the uh, news again. The uh, bad news, uh, Jeff Robinson back on the 21 days at disabled list. Retroactive until June, uh, from June the 11th. And that's because of a pulled muscle on his left side. So we're wishing uh, Jeff the very best. Oh, he got him. Lou wanted to swing, and he couldn't turn it loose. And he knew it, too. So Bodiger gets the Tigers 1-2-3 in the first inning. There is no score. Okay, the batting lineup for the Red Sox, leading off the second baseman, Jody Reed. Batting second, the right fielder, Randy Kutcher. Batting third, Wade Boggs playing third base. The fourth batter in left field, Mike Greenwell. Batting fifth, the DH, Dwight Evans. Batting sixth, Ellis Burks in center field. The seventh batter, Nick Cassassi, first base. Batting eighth, the catcher, Rick Cerrone. And the ninth batter, the shortstop, Luis Rivera. Defensively for the Tigers, Sheridan, Pettis, and Lemon in the outfield. Moreland, Brumley, Whitaker, Bergman, Heath behind the plate. And the 35-year-old left-hander, Frank Tanana, on the mound for the Tigers, making his 14th appearance and start of the season. This will tie Doyle Alexander for the team lead and starts uh, with tonight's appearance. Frank has lost two in a row. Prior to that, he had won three straight uh, decisions. Well, the last game that Frank pitched in Toronto was a brilliant game. He suffered a 2 nothing loss. And he was touched for two runs in the first inning, then blanked the Blue Jays uh, the rest of the way. He scattered five hits over the last seven innings and had a career-high 10 strikeouts, season-high 10 strikeouts. He pitched eight innings, eight hits, allowed two runs, one earned run, Walked five and has uh, ten strikeouts. And this will be his first start of the season against the Red Sox. 
As we look at the Tigers junior manager Sparky Anderson on the bench. As Al told you they had a closed door session before the game tonight. Nobody knows what was said but you have to speculate that they talked about the play last night in which the Tigers just ran the bases in an atrocious fashion through to the wrong base did several things that cost him some runs wound up losing by one. Jody Reed will lead it off in the first pitch from Tanano. That's a strike. We have Ken Kaiser behind the plate tonight. Larry Young is at first base. Jim Joyce and Jim McKean. And Jody's a high ball hitter. Doesn't have a lot of power. No home runs so far this year. Look out. Boy, they better grab that one before it goes fair. I've never seen that before. Frank threw the pitch over his head and behind him, and it hit his bat. And almost fair ball, and it would have been a base hit. Now watch this. You don't see this happen. Look at it hit the bat right there. Well, it almost went in fair, fair territory. I believe I heard Mike Heath yell and look out. I don't think I bet. If the ball had stayed fair, Jody Reed probably would have had a base hit. Everybody was surprised. Moreland at third base as well as Tanana. So I strike two to Reed. As Tanana gets ready. Ooh, right down the middle, and he's out on strikes. Well, Jody Reed, a strikeout victim. Well, here's a pitch that a, a pitcher has to be able to pitch inside, particularly here at Fenway Park, uh, because the hitters always seem to be wanting to reach out and try to pull the ball down the left field line. And you have to establish that you will pitch inside. Randy Kutcher is the batter. He got into the ball game last night about the midway point. Very good defensive outfielder, they tell us. Here's the one strike pitch. We'll make it strike two. No home runs and three runs batted in for Kutcher. Frank Tanana gets ready on the two strike pitch. Breaking ball low. Oh, we had 31,000 plus here last night. We're going to have more than that tonight as they keep filing in at Fenway Park. One ball, two strikes. That'll even the count at two and two. We can see from our vantage point beyond the left field fence and people still walking from the subway, which is some two, three blocks away. So they're going to miss the first inning or so. By the time they get here. The 2-2 pitch to Kutcher. He struck him out. Tanana has faced two batters and he struck out two. We're telling you Frank had 10 strikeouts his last start against Toronto. You see there he just took a little bit off his ball and turned it over and had Randy well out in front which Frank Tanana can make anybody uh, do on occasions. And the batter is Wade Boggs with two outs and nobody on. There's a strike to Boggs. The wind is blowing toward left field tonight. Last night it was blowing straight in from home from center field to home plate. So we'll see some off the wall before this night's over. Boggs had a 12-game hitting streak uh, snap last night. That's the longest of this uh, season. Four weight. Waiting on the 1-1 pitch. Slow curve outside. Ball two, strike one. Here's a little Ethos pitch just to try to mess up the timing of, uh, of all the hitters. And a ground ball, great play by Moreland, and he's going to throw him out. Oh, a fine play by Keith Moreland as he robs Wade Boggs of a base hit. At the end of one, it's nothing, nothing. 
Here come the Tigers in the second inning. Keith Borland will lead it off. Matt Noakes and then Pat Sheridan. Well, you'll want to be at the ballpark on Saturday, July 8th. That's the annual Tigers Kits game. And all the fun takes place prior to the Tiger Blue Jay game. It'll start at 7.35. Saturday, July the 8th. And a strike to Borland. Here's where Keith hits the ball. Most of the time, straight away. He's hit uh, five home runs this year. One ball, one strike. He's batting at 310. Five home runs, 28 runs batted in. And the 1-1 one -one pitch. It's a strike. Makes it one and two. Boniker sneaky. There was a lot of off-speed pitches, curve balls, and then sneaks one in on you. There's the off-speed pitch and a strike out. Right. Didn't have a chance out. No, not on this one. He drops down. And actually, it was a good pitch to hit, but uh, unexpected. Uh, took a lot off that breaking pitch. There's Matt Noakes, who is the designated hitter for the Tigers. Matthew got into last night's game as a pinch batter and flied to right field. And it's inside. And Matthew's batting slump also has affected his catching. He's really not uh, doing a real good job behind the plate defensively. There's a pop fly in the shallow center. Burke's coming hard. He can't get it. Matthew hits for second. Oh, he's going to come back. Well, he's gotten so few hits, he was watching that baby all the way to first base. Yeah, he could have been at second base, but... He didn't run that hard going to first place and then uh, couldn't make up his mind. Now this ball is uh, on the handle. You see there, he just stands at home plate. He's hoping that it drops in and then the ball just gets away from Ellis. He makes a great effort. So he's at first, one out, and the batter is Sheridan. Pat Sheridan batting at 224. Three home runs on the year. The pitch coming up from Boddicker. Charlie Hudson's back on the list. He's been on the disabled list for a while. He came off today. Joined the Tigers. The one strike pitch is low. One and one to Sheridan. Well, Pat's wearing his glasses again. He uh, had been going with the contacts, but maybe he feels that uh, that'll help him, uh, particularly at night. He's waiting on the one one pitch. And it's low ball, too. Two strike one to Pat Sheridan. And a ground ball. It could be a double play. Out at second and out at first. He hit it hard right at Rivera who comes to double play. We go to the bottom of the second in a nothing-nothing game. Well, congratulations, best wishes, everything good we can think of, Al, are in order for the Pistons. Absolutely, George. Uh, congratulations to uh, Chuck and all the boys uh, on the team. They've, they've just, uh, they've reached the pinnacle that very few athletes are able to get to. They're world champions. They are the best in the world, and they've made a great city and a great state very proud of them. And four straight. They don't do that very often, either. Sounds like the Yankees of old. The pitch to Greenwell is in for a strike. Mike Greenwell. This fellow continues a great tradition in left field here in Boston. A fly ball in the right. Coming back. Way back on the warning track. He's going to catch it. 
Chester Lemon went about as far as he could go and hauled it in. Yes, sir. He gives this ball a pretty good ride. Looked like uh, when it left the bat, it had a chance to be a home run. The wind blowing towards left field. And Chester goes, oh, maybe two feet from the track and makes the play. And the batter is Dwight Evans, who is the designated hitter for the Red Sox. Out of the lineup with a slight injury, they tell us. But he can hit. One out, nobody on. We're in the second inning. And the pitch low to Evans. Talking about the great tradition in left field. It started with Williams, then Yastrzemski, now Greenwell. And you see Dwight pulls the ball, which you would expect from a right-handed batter here at Fenway Park, particularly. It's ball two and no strikes to Dwight Evans. Batting at 3.02, he has nine home runs. As Tanana gets ready. Ball three. Tigers very deep on the infield for this ball. He doesn't butt much. If at all. The 3 0 pitch. He walks. So Dwight Evans becomes the first base runner for the Red Sox. He's at first base, one out, and the batter will be Burks. Nellis, one of the fine young players in uh, all of baseball right now. He's had two real good years for the Red Sox, and he looks like he's on his way to his third straight. Last year, he hit uh, 294 with uh, 18 home runs. And a pitch inside the Burks. And he's also one of the few Red Sox that will steal a base. Uh, the Red Sox all historically has always been a team that, that went for the big innings, but uh, Ellis is one of the few players that will steal a base for them. Here's a strike, evens the count at one and one. Tanana got him one, two, three in the first inning. He struck out Reed and Kutcher. Got Boggs out on a fine play by Moreland at third base. And he got the first bat of this inning before walking Evans. And another strike to Ellis Burks. Exit one and two. They're playing a doubleheader in Texas. They had rain last night. And the Angels and the Rangers are underway. No score in the first game at the end of three. Hey, strike three. He's still waiting for the curveball. And he takes three fastballs in a row. Take a look at this pitch inside again, and uh, for the youngsters that are on the bench should take notice of the way Tanana is pitching. Uh, in today's game, very few players will pitch inside, but uh, you see it surprises most hitters particularly with two strikes that a pitcher will throw inside. Nick Asaski is the batter. We got this big fella from the Cincinnati Ball Club. And they sent a pretty good ball player over there to get him. Todd Benzinger. This one's hit to third. Moreland goes to first and gets him in plenty of time. At the end of two, Boston nothing, the Tigers nothing. Chester Lemon will lead it off for the Tigers, and the first pitch is a strike. Lemon, Heath, and Brumley in the third inning. There's the breaking ball. It's high. One ball, one strike. Tigers have had one base runner. That was a single by Noakes, and he was erased on a double play ball. All the conversation in the press room tonight, when I got in there, I was about 
the Red Sox playing back in the ninth inning and given, giving up the tying run on a ground ball. But the Tigers couldn't get the ground ball. No, nope, they uh, Roger uh, the Smith was uh, just overpowering and struck out the last two batters. There's a pop fly that's going to be caught by the second baseman Jody Reed. So Lemon is out one away and the batter will be Mike Heath. Well here's a good pitch inside with two strikes and uh, Chester gets it on the handle. Jody Reed playing second base normally a shortstop but playing second base since Marty Barrett had knee surgery. Mike Heath. He's had six hits in the last two games. Five of those came in Toronto on Monday night. And he got one last night. No, he's swinging the bat well. Uh, bat and Oaks is having trouble, and uh, that's why he's behind the plate, catching more regularly than, uh, than normal. One ball, one strike to the Tiger catcher. Look out. He hit him in the helmet, I think, and Mike's laughing about it. They hit him in the right spot. <laughs> hit him in the head. I'm just kidding. You can see he's laughing going. He just couldn't get out of the way of a sidearm curveball. Very slow sidearm curveball. Now watch this. We've seen some strange things so far tonight. Tanana threw one behind the batter and hit the bat. This one hits him right on the helmet. <laughs> so he's at first base with one out. No batter is Mike Brumley. Mike Boddicker pitching to Mike Brumley. And Mike Keith at first base. Boddicker gets set and the pitch is outside. Mr. Emotion himself, Ken Kaiser behind the plate. Complete opposite of Steve Palermo. And they're both great umpires. One ball, no strikes, and a strike makes it one and one. Brumley gave it a battle in the ninth inning last night. He fouled a couple of pitches away, but he was just overpowered by Lee Smith, who yep. was throwing about as hard Al as I've seen him. Yeah, he hadn't pitched in a while, and uh, he said he was a little rusty, but he was throwing hard. And of course, everything worked out in the uh, the way I'm sure Sparky Anderson wanted. He was able to get two men over uh, second and third. We had two hitters to get him in, but uh, he just threw the ball by uh, Brumley and Pettis. It's a ball and two strikes to Mike Brumley. He's batting at 278. He's done a pretty good job. He's getting a chance to play every day. Uh, Alan Trammell out, will be out for a while, and uh, he's getting a chance to play and not worry about going 0 for 4, and he's, he's done pretty well. The count is even at 2 and 2 to Brumley. Mike Heath, the runner at first base, is not a threat to run unless Sparky wants to put the hit and run play on. And the infield shortened up for the double play ball. Everybody's in a few steps. Outside. Ball three, strike two. He'll be running more than likely. Boddicker is not a strikeout pitcher as such. Even though he has two tonight. The 3 2 pitch. There he goes. Ball four, and Brumley's on. So he hit a man, he walked a man. The Tigers have him at first and second, one out. And the batter will be Gary Pettis. And Boddicker, not too sure this wasn't a strike. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. 
Well, you can party with the stars and get a preview of the Detroit Grand Prix. That's tomorrow night, starting at 7, only on Channel 4. Gary Pettis has hit the ball hard tonight. It was speared by the pitcher. And here's one, another one speared by the pitcher. Can you believe it? Two line drives off the bat of Pettis, and both of them spared by Boddicker. This time he makes the double play. We go to the bottom of the third. It's nothing, nothing. They're all the way here from Canton, Michigan for tonight's game, Tiger fans. Well, the old theory is the thinking, Al, if you hit line drives up the middle, you get a lot of base hits. But Gary Pettis has hit two shots, and they've both been picked off. And it's uh, very unusual to see uh, the same batter line the ball two times in a row back to the pitcher. And, of course, uh, Boddicker is a great fielding pitcher. He's got great reflexes. Rick Cerrone, the batter, and he bounces it foul. Just a reminder that coming up later will be our Bud Batter's Box home run inning. And if your name has been selected and a Tiger hits a home run, you're going to win $100 and a share of a $10,000 bonus at the end of the year. So stay tuned for this. You could be a big winner. One strike to Cerrone. He's the catcher against right-handed pitching, the left-handed pitching, and Gedman against right-handed pitching. And here's a drive to center right at Gary Pettis. He hit it hard right into the glove of Pettis, who puts it away without any trouble. And the batter will be Rivera. Luis Rivera. Had a double in last night's game. He was traded from Montreal. He's 26 years old from Puerto Rico. And he takes a strike. Well, the weatherman says, I'm going to be good to you. Hold off the rain till midnight or so, and then rain most of the day tomorrow. So we'll see. One ball, one strike. It's been a beautiful day in Boston. A lot of sunshine, a lot of blue sky. Clouded up about 6 o'clock. This one bounced towards first. Bergman throws to Tanana. Oh, good play, Frank. Fergie threw it behind him, and Tanana had to catch the ball, find the bag. And he made the play. Well, here's a play that they practice all the time, and the... Uh, Tanana gets a good break off the mound. The ball, Dave's got to back up on it, and he sort of lobs the ball to him, and Frank overruns it. Really has to reach behind him, but he's able to just touch the bag with the, the outside part of his foot. Second out of the inning, and it'll bring up Jody Reed. Jody Reed struck out his first time up. Two outs, nobody on. We're in the third inning, no score in the game. There's the big Epus pitch, and it hangs outside. And Jody, a little bit more of a pull hitter than he should be. It was someone who doesn't have a lot of power. You'd think he would spray the ball around, but the uh, stats on him is he pulls the ball most of the time. One ball, no strikes to read, and a pitch is in for a strike. Makes it one and one. He's done very well against left-handers so far this year. He's batting 352 coming into this game against left-handers. Here's the one-one pitch. Fouls this one away. Ken Kaiser's giving the man a little hand at home plate. Some fellow dived for the ball. It was coming towards the stand, and he fell right out of the stands onto the playing field. Here's the one-two pitch. Breaking ball low. Ball two and strike two.
We had 15 runs scored here last night without a home run. And he strikes him out. Jody Reed for the second time strikes out. At the end of three, Boston nothing, the Tigers nothing. Tigers baseball is brought to you by Metro Detroit's quality four dealers. Their commitment to quality and good service makes them Detroit's best team. By Kroger, where you should look for the scissors, your symbol of saving. By Taco Bell, where your money always takes you farther. And by General Tire, get on your generals and go. Here's our TV schedule now. We'll be home in Detroit this Sunday, June 18th, against California at 1 o'clock. And the following weekend, we'll be on the West Coast in Seattle. Saturday night, June 24th, 10 o'clock Michigan time. And Sunday afternoon, June 25th, at 4 o'clock. So we're going to crisscross the country for you in the next 10 days. Here's Bergman with a pop fly to center. Burke's coming hard, and he caught it. A sliding catch by Ellis Burks. Well, this is why everybody's so high on this young man in center field. He's not only uh, a good offensive player, but he's an outstanding defensive player. And you see here comes in and uh, makes a sliding catch on his knees. Grass still a little bit wet. Outstanding play. No matter is Whitaker who struck out his first time up. Lou takes it low. Darkness just now settling in on Fenway Park. This game started with plenty of daylight. Ball two, no strikes. Blew a 313 career average against Boston. Done very well here. And Boddicker is in danger of walking. Whitaker, he's walked one tonight. Ball three, no strikes. And a strike makes it three and one. The home run leaders, Tettleton, 16, Bo Jackson, 15, Whitaker tied for third. Here's a long belt, way back, way back in right field, and gone. A home run for Whitaker. Now well, he's no longer tied now. No, sir. With McGriff, he uh, gave that one a ride. Uh, we had to wait for a while to see if the right fielder made the play. But Whitaker got a three and one pitch, a fastball, it looked like inside, and he gave it a ride. That's a long way in this ballpark to right field. Take a look at the swing again. Fastball inside is what's just what Lou likes. You see there, he thought he had it off. Right fielder makes a good play. You couldn't really tell whether or not he made the catch or not. He didn't miss it by much. Looked like he might have jumped just a fraction before the ball got there. One strike to Moreland. Keith Moreland struck out in the second inning and he takes strike two. He's having all kinds of trouble with Buttiger. But he's done a good job. Hit nine, uh, 19 games. Kim Kaiser almost went up with the right hand. 19 of his last 22 games and he's really come on like gangbusters. Count at two and two. Ball two, strike two to Moreland. And a fly ball to center. Burks is there. So Moreland is out number two in the fourth inning. He'll bring up Matt Notes. Noakes had a pop fly single his first time up. 
He's second on the team in home runs. He has seven. And, of course, we mentioned this before. He got most of those in the first couple weeks of the season. Inside pitch drives him away. No strikes and a fly ball toward left. Way back, this one's going. It will be off the wall. Matthew heads for second and in with a double. Matt Noakes going to the opposite field. Finds the big monster out there. Well, here's why this park is such a hitter's ballpark. Uh, probably an out in just about every other stadium. It's uh, halfway up there, and uh, Matt Noakes has to hustle into second base. He's at second with two outs, and the batter is Sheridan, who bounced into a double play in the second inning. Tigers lead it one to nothing on the home run by Whitaker. Pitches inside to Sheridan. I think Boddicker and Kaiser are going to have to get together in a moment. He's questioned about three pitches this inning. Not to the liking of Ken Kaiser. So I get one and one to Pat. Pat batting at 222. He could pick up a run here. Noakes at second, two outs. Pitch out of the strike zone. Makes it one and two. Mike Boddicker came up with the Orioles. He pitches a lot like Tanana, would you say, Al? Yeah, he does. He turns the ball over a lot. He's throwing more hard pitches tonight than I've seen him in the past. He's he's, he's developed a knuckleball. He's look at Joe Morgan, the manager of the Red Sox. He throws a knuckleball and Sparky on the other side of the field. But he's not going to challenge too many hitters with the fastball inside. He tries to sink it, make him uh, hit the ball on the ground. He's ready with a one-two pitch. And the count goes even at two and two. Well, we had a lot of empty seats last night because it was raining. You don't see those empty seats tonight. There's a base hit up the middle. Matthews going to have to hurry. The throw by Burks, and they cut it off, and they've got Sheridan in a rundown. cut it off and that allowed Noakes to score the second run. The Tigers lead it 2 nothing. Here's the end of that inning. Good base hit by uh, Sheridan. He doesn't know whether Matt Noakes is going to be able to score so he's aggressively going to make them cut the ball off if they let it go through and Matthew is safe and he's also on second base Sheridan thought he got his hand in but uh, you can't fault Sheridan for being aggressive no sir anytime you can make them cut it off take the run point out you got to be ahead this is Randy Kutcher to lead it off one ball one strike Randy Kutcher struck out in the first inning Tigers lead it 2 0. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Rangers have a 3 0 lead over California in the fifth inning of the first game of a doubleheader. Ball two. Ball two, strike one. No score in Baltimore. Yankees playing the Orioles. The 2 1 pitch. Ball three. Ball three, strike one. 
He should get something to hit. Frank doesn't want to walk him. And he hits it into left center field where Gary Pettis is stationed. So Kutcher is out on a fly to center. First out of the inning, and the batter will be Wade Boggs. Wade Boggs out on a great play by Moreland his first time out. Well, it's just a great hitter. Maybe the best of all time. I'm sure that some of the old timers will question that, but and you see he likes the ball up. I, I believe there he really doesn't have a weakness, although they his strength is up. That's where he has his most power. One ball, one strike to Wade Boggs. Waiting to get a beach ball off the field in center field. He's done very well against Tanana, who is considered by many to be the toughest left-hander to face for a left-handed batter. He's batting 353 lifetime against Tanana. This one just missed on the outside. Oh, wait. Ball two, strike one. He had a 12-game hitting streak broken last night. And here's a line shot in the right. Maybe extra bases. Nope, he's going to hold on as Lemon gets it back in quickly. Good piece of work by a Chet Lemon. And you don't play Boggs to pull the ball. You see there he tries the three-quarter Boggs and uh, gets it inside. Chester playing him straight away. Does a good job to hustle over there and gets the ball into second base very quickly, holding uh, Wade Box to a single. This is Mike Greenwell. He hit one a long way in the second inning. It was caught by Lemon on the warning track. And a base hit to right. Boggs is going to hold it second. Greenwell wastes no time. He lines it into right field. They come inside. This must be the way they think they can get him out. Uh, again, driving the ball hard. He just missed hitting a home run in the second inning, his first time at bat. This is the first threat against Tanana. He had only one base runner before this inning. That was a walk to this man right here, Dwight Evans. Two on and one out. Tigers lead by two. Pitches low to Dwight Evans. Dewey's had three career home runs off of Frank Tanana and nine RBIs. are looking for the double play ball from this young man. Ball two. Ball two, no strike. Well, the Tigers got two at the top of the inning. And the Red Sox threaten. Two on, one out. And a ball two count to Evans. Dewey doesn't hit too many uh, ground balls. He has grounded in only three double plays this year. Usually hits uh, most of his balls, a lot of the balls in the air. Ball two, strike one. Tanana wants to start all over again. They have a completely different set of signs with the runner at second base. Very simple when there's nobody on base and then it gets a little complicated. They don't want the base runner to pick up the signs and flash them to the hitter. Which can be done easily if you can decipher the pitches, the signs. Now Mike 
he's going to call a timeout. And he's going to go out and talk to him about it. Well, he's not calling the other infielders in, particularly the shortstop or second base, so they must not be changing the signs. Ken Kaiser's headed for the mound. He's going to say, hey, guys. You kept me out here four hours last night. Now let's play ball. Wade Boggs is the runner at second. Greenwell at first. And the 2 1 pitch coming up to Evans. A strike. Evans a count at two and two. Look at that last pitch. I think it kind of surprised him, not expecting uh, ahead of the count to get a fastball inside. And the 2 2 pitch. Hey, might be a double play out at second and out at first. They turn the double play on Dwight Evans at the end of four. The Tigers lead it 2 0. in the fifth inning. Chet Lemon, Mike Heath, and Mike Brumley will be the batters. 2-0 the Tigers lead it. Whitaker hit a home run, then Noakes doubled and Sheridan singled to get the two runs in. Chet Lemon popped the second base his first time up. Whitaker delivers a curve low. Seattle got four in the first inning at the Metrodome in Minnesota. They lead four nothing. Here's a drive to right field and in for a base hit. Cutcher racing in wisely pulled up and played it on the first hop. So Lemon is on with a hit. Four of the last five batters have had base hits off Boddicker. The batter is Heath. Mike Heath, who was hit by a pitch ball his last time up. I think he called it a strike. Mike Heath. He's kind of laughing about it. He says, Kenny, you're kidding. There goes the runner and a nine drive. Second. Lemon on his way to the plate, and he'll score easily. Well, they put the hit and run on, and he works it to perfection. Oh, this is uh, picture perfect. Uh, hitting the ball behind the runner. Michael, who's been swinging a hot bat, he had five hits in one game up in Toronto. That's the most he's ever had. There goes Chester. And pretty good pitch. Looked like a ball out of the strike zone. Michael just flicks at the ball and lines it down the right field line. Chester hustling all the way around the bag. He sees uh, Alex Graham is waving him arm and uh, Chester is able to go all the way from first to home. A two base hit and a run batted in for Heat. Here's a bunt and it's foul. Mike Brumley attempting to get Heath over to third base with a bunt. This fellow scored five runs, as you can see, in the last three ball games. He walked his first time up. If he goes to third base with it, he's got to get it by Boddicker. Make Boggs feel it. Oh, a dandy. A dandy bunt. I don't know how they got him. He threw it into the runner. Jody Reed just picked it out of the side of Brumley. Good play by Reed. Brumley looking to see why uh, Mike Heath didn't go to third base. 
Uh, yet uh, Sharon had a good view from uh, home plate. He looks at third, sees that Mike's not going, and uh, able to throw the first base. Well, the sacrifice did not work. As he stated second, he's there with one out. And the batter will be Gary Pettis. caught it and tagged him at the same time then he looked like he was out well it was very frustrating to Mike Heath who did not go to third on the bunt then he's picked off on the next pitch and it's one strike to Pettis who has been to the plate twice and lined the ball with the pitcher both times delivers outside ball two strike one the two one pitch to Pettis fly ball to center Good team play for Ellis Burks Tigers get a run on two hits we go to the bottom of the fifth three nothing Detroit is going to be Alan Trammell poster day at Tiger Stadium. Every youngster 14 and under attending the game between the Tigers and the Angels will receive an Alan Trammell action poster. And that game will start at 120. And we're ho hoping Alan Trammell's feeling better and uh, get back into the lineup shortly. Ellis Burks the batter. And a strike to Burks who struck out his first time up. Tigers three, Boston nothing. Bottom of the fifth. Frank Tanana delivers, and it's strike two. They're going to throw this big fella. A lot of off-speed pitches, a lot of breaking balls. And surprise him with a fastball now and then. But it'll be right in on his fifth. Here's the strike two pitch. Another curveball. Tigers have three runs, six hits, no errors. Boston, no runs on two hits. And it's strike two to the leadoff man here in the fifth inning. Ooh, there's the inside fastball. A little bit tight. Makes it one and two. Texas got another run. They lead California 3 nothing at the end of six. That's the first of two in Arlington. Yankees and Baltimore, no score at the end of three. And Seattle 4 to nothing over Minnesota at the end of one. the one two pitch to Burks makes it two and two <laughs> Toronto plays at Milwaukee Cleveland at Chicago Oakland at Kansas City and you see there Boston leading the American League in team batting average he struck him out through the inside fastball right in on his fist and Burke strikes out Still the best pitch in, in baseball when you have two strikes on a hitter. That ball inside is awful tough to, to get out in front on with two strikes. You're waiting a little longer 
trying to get a good pitch to hit, and uh, that fastball inside can tie you up a lot. Nick Asoski is the batter. Bounce to third, his first time up. Tomano has struck out five tonight. See where he likes the ball up in the strike zone. Uh, has a lot of power. They think he's going to hit a lot of home runs here at Fenway Park. He has nine on the year. Ooh, right off the shin guard. One and two to Nick Asaski. E S A S K Y. Tanana wants a new baseball. Frank struck out two in the first inning, one in the second, one in the third, and the first batter here in the fifth inning. For a total of five on the night. Here's a check swing, and they're going to have to hurry to get him. They do. Oh, my key. Bouncing out of there like Yogi used to do it. Yeah, Michael's doing it all with the bat and also defensively. You get everything from Mike Heath when he's in the lineup. And uh, as a manner, you expect Mike Heath to make these kind of plays. He's always bouncing around behind the plate. A good throw, good pickup by Bergman. And the batter is Rick Cerrone. There's a strike to Cerrone. When you think about Yogi, you think about hitting, you think about home runs, RBIs, and yet he developed into one of the finest catchers in the league. And especially on plays like that, he was lightning quick. Strike two to Rick Cerrone. Rick batting with two outs, nobody on. A pitch from tonight. Look out, a shot to the middle. Tanana a little bit unhappy with himself. He had two strikes on him. Now here's a two-strike pitch, and certainly that's not where he wanted it. The ball in the middle of the plate. Cerrone having a super year against left-handers. 387. He's seeing 448 here at Fenway Park. He's at first two outs, and the batter is Rivera, who bounced to first base his first time up. The pitch outside. A single by Cerrone was hip number three for the Red Sox. No strikes. That'll make it ball two. You watch Tanana. When he misses, he barely misses. He has an idea on every pitch. Ball two, no strikes. going to go further than it did and uh, ball hitting right in the middle of the glove. Ball hit on the end of the bat. Uh, looked like a ball that uh, should have been caught. You see there it didn't have to jump very much if at all. It could have knuckled though. I mean that he looked he went after it kind of awkward like. bat flew toward shortstop along with the ball. You never know. Maybe it destroyed his concentration for a moment, but he did go after it in a very awkward manner. 
So Tanana's got to get Jody Reed. Two on and two outs. He got the first two batters this inning. The one strike pitch coming up to Jody Reed. Good block by Heath. Struck out in the first inning. Struck out again in the third inning. He bats with runners at first and second, two outs. Once again, uh, they seem to be having a bit of trouble with the signs. Frank's ready to go. Pitches inside. Ball two strike one. Red Sox have four hits. They got two in the fourth inning. A double play ball got Tanana out of the jam. Then after the first two went out here in the fifth, singles by Cerrone and Rivera. And he's trying to get Jody Reed. And Sparky and his brain trust just hold their breath. The 2 1 pitch. Base hit by Reed, and it's a 3 1 ball game. This ball looked like it might have gone right through the legs of uh, Frank Tanana. He yes. just does not get his glove down in time. After two quick outs, uh, three base hits in a row, although the one play by Rivera to shortstop looked like the play should have been made, but Frank Tanana not able to get that third out. So he's got to get Randy Kutcher. First and third, two outs. Tigers lead by two. Luis Rivera went all the way to third on the base hit. First pitch coming up to Kutcher. It's a ball. This fellow's hitting at an ideal spot in the lineup. Hitting in front of Boggs. You're not going to get many walks. He steps out just as the Nano got ready. Time call by Ken Kaiser. The wind has picked up. Blowing pretty good toward the wall and left. He chops this one. Good play by Tanana. Good play by Tanana. Very unlikely anybody else would have been able to make the play. They got a run on three hits, strand a couple, and at the end of five, the Tigers lead it. 3-1. Well, here's another special day for you. Sunday, June 18th. It's going to be desk clock day at Tiger Stadium. Every adult 15 and over attending the ball game that day at 135 will receive a Tigers desk clock. And the California Angels will be in town. Yes, sir, how about Saturday? Jim Abbott's supposed to pitch against the Tigers. Uh, that ought to be a big day for that young man growing up in the Flint area, going to University of Michigan, number one draft pick, right into the big leagues. And pitching very, very well. Dave Bergman, the leadoff man. David 0 for 2 tonight. Slide to left. 
Out on a good play by Burks his last time up. This one's inside ball two. Bergie had his best year ever uh, last season, batting 294. Changed his swing, and we were talking about swing down, and your average goes up. That's exactly what Bergie did last year, starting to swing more level. And a strike makes it two and one. He has one home run, seven runs batted in. All three. Ball three, strike one. Mike Boddicker ready and the pitch. He walked it. So the leadoff man is on. Dave Bergman is at first, and the batter will be Whitaker, who had a home run his last time up. And that was his third career home run against Mike Boddicker. And his 15th home run of the year. Tigers lead 3-1 as they bat in the sixth inning. The pitch is over but low. Well, they really shorten up on the infield when they look for the double play ball. Everybody moves in. Three, four steps. It helps a little bit when you get a bouncing ball right at you, but a lot of balls will go by you that you would feel. Now the reason you shorten up certainly to get the ball faster, but you can uh, you can wait in case the base runner is attempting the steal. You don't have to commit yourself sooner getting to the base, second base. Uh, you can just wait until the ball passes uh, the hitter. Ball two, no strikes to Whitaker as Whitaker delivers down the middle. Well, I've never seen a second baseman play that short before. Uh, Not where the guy can hit the ball as hard as Whitaker. Very shallow at second base. Very shallow. The 2 1 pitch. Ball three. Jenny Walk Bergman to open this inning. Getting some action. That's Dennis Lamp in the bullpen. And it's ball three, strike one to Whitaker. He may jump on this one. And a drive down the line. Fair ball into the corner. And it'll be a ground rule double. That's a tough break for the Tigers. Yeah, it could, you know, playing out there many years myself, that ball can hug the, hug the fence there and get right by the right fielder and uh, everybody run forever. Take a look at it again. This is a... A fastball, sinking fastball. Lou just goes out and reaches for it and lines it down the right field line. Now, this ball can hug the fence, but you see there the fan touches it. And actually, it bounced into the stand, yeah, so it, it really did. wasn't the fan's fault. It no. just bounced uh, into the stand. I thought at first, when I'm looking from this angle, they reached over. Here's Keith Moreland. And a ground ball to first base. They're going to give up a run on the ground ball. And... You've really got to know what a job Moreland just did. He not only got the run in from third base, but he moved the runner from second over to third where he can score on a fly ball. Now, had he hit the ball to the shortstop, he'd have got the run in, but he left the runner at second. Yeah, a lot of players would go up there and they'd be trying to hit the home run or a sacrifice fly. They pop it up in the infield or, uh, and nobody moves. Uh, Moreland said, hey, I'm not swinging the bat real well in this series. I'm going to make sure I get that runner in from third and advance uh, the guy to third base. He did a whale of a job. Tigers lead it four to one, and Matt Noakes has a chance to drive in another one. He's had a single and a double. Infield in tight, very tight. Pitch inside. Matthew had a pop fly single his first time up. Then he hit the wall in the fourth inning. Foul ball. Barely foul past first base. 
Well, they're underway in Chicago. No score. The Indians and the White Sox underway in Kansas City. No score. And it must be raining in Milwaukee. Nothing posted yet out there except the pitchers. This is Mike Boddicker trying to get Matt Noakes with a runner at third and one out. And it's foul. He just flopped up a big curve and Matthew pulled it foul. And he might have him set up. He might be ready to bust a fast one in on it. So we look at Joe Morgan. Ball two, strike two to Matthew. And a base hit in the center. He threw in the fastball, and Matthew just rifled it in the center field. And here comes Joe Morgan. That's going to be all. He has made the call to the bullpen. And we'll see Dennis Lamp. That was a real good piece of hitting by uh, Matt Noakes. Uh, even though the ball was uh, looked like inside, he was able to muscle it straight away. Take a look at this pitch again. They want to pitch him inside with two strikes. Oh, he gets the ball out over the plate, and uh, boy, this is where Matthew loves that pitch. Middle of the plate, he can get those arms extended, and he hits the ball hard in center field. And while there's a break in the action with the score of the Tigers five, the Red Sox one, we're going to pause for these words. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. We'll go behind the headlines and get the real story. That's tomorrow afternoon at 4.30 on Inside Edition, only on Channel 4. And we have a new pitcher, Dennis Lamp. George, I told you that this guy never pitches poorly against the Tigers. So far in his career, he is 10-0 lifetime against the Tigers. Tigers have never beaten him, and why somebody wouldn't start him against the Tigers because he just owns the Tigers. This year, he's 0-1, a 3.48 uh, earned run average, 15 games so far, 33 and two-thirds innings, allowed 36 hits and 14 runs. Long time with the uh, Cubbies, uh, the American League, of course, with the White Sox for three years, Toronto for three years, Oakland in 87, and Boston last season. He comes on with a runner at first base, only one out in the inning. And the batter is Sheridan, who's had a single and a run batted in. Dennis Lamp, big, tall right-hander. And a base hit in the left. Sheridan wasted no time. He jumped on the first pitch. That's his second hit of the game. Take a pitch it again. Lamp, a sinker ball pitcher. He throws a sinker and, and a good piece of hitting by Pat Sheridan, not trying to pull that pitch that's going down and away from him, going the opposite way. And the batter is Lemon, who had a single in the fifth inning and scored a run. Two on and one out. Pitch is over but low. Chet Lemon had his biggest day ever here at Fenway Park a year ago. He had five runs batted in on August 14th. He hit a three-run homer in the first inning off of Roger Clemens, and he'll get a chance to do the same thing tomorrow, hopefully. There's a pop fly down the line in right. Kutcher's going to catch it. Randy Kutcher racing near the line to get the pop fly off the bat of Lemon. And they leave it up to Mike Heath. A little breaking ball, a little slider. Chester just trying to hit the ball to right field. Pretty good play by the uh, right fielder. He had to come a long ways for that ball. Wasn't hit all that hard. Mike Heath has a double to his credit, and he's been hit by a pitch ball. No 
strikes. Matt Noakes is the runner at second. Pat Sheridan at first base. And the one and oh pitch. Bouncer to shortstop. And get him out of the inning. Tigers score a couple. We go to the bottom of the six. 5 1 Detroit. Baseball brought to you by Ballpark Frank. They plug when you cook them. By your local Pepsi Cola bottler, a generation ahead. By Highland Superstore. Nobody gives you more, and nobody but nobody sells for less. And by GE Automotive. If you're a car maker or supplier, put their minds to work. Here come the Red Sox in the sixth inning. Wade Box will lead it off. Mike Greenwell and then Dwight Evans. Tigers five, Boston one. As Frank Tanana goes to work in the sixth inning. Pitches outside to Box. He's had a base hit tonight, one for two. A pitch from Tanana. It's a strike. Evens the count at one and one. In the first of two in Arlington, the Rangers lead 5 nothing behind Nolan Ryan. Working on another shutout. There's a base hit. Well, he's just a hitting machine. Doesn't really hit the long ball or extra base hits all that much, but he is a hitting machine and he just works at his trade probably better than anybody else in the game today. They say Tony Gwynn with San Diego also is that type of hitter. But uh, just an outstanding hitter. And the batter is Greenwell who's had a single today. Breaking ball is low. One ball, no strikes. We're getting action in the Tiger bullpen. Like Charlie Hudson. Tanana checks his runner. Oh, he was going to jump all over the breaking ball. It never did get there. Greenwell is well out in front of it. Greenwell, who uh, really stays in there well against uh, left handers. And he's just telling himself, I believe, keep that shoulder in there. Don't pull it out too, too fast. The one one pitches outside. Ball two strike one. Here's Charlie Hudson just put back on the active list. The Boggs and Greenwell had back to back hits in the fourth inning. And a fly ball in the right. Chester Lemon's going to catch it deep in right field. Boggs tags up, but he goes back. He had an idea. Greenwell hit it a long way. That's the second time in this game he's driven Lemon to the warning track. This is probably the only park uh, in the American League that this, this ball stays in the ballpark. He gets a breaking ball up in the strike zone. He thinks it has a chance down the line. Just hangs up. First out of the inning, and it'll bring up Dwight Evans. Dwight Evans walked. Then he bounced into a double play. They're underway at Milwaukee. Toronto got two in the first inning. This one's low. Everybody back. They doubled this fella up in the fourth inning with two runners aboard. And a strike evens the count at one and one. Frank 
Tanana has allowed one run tonight. That came in the fifth inning. He got the first two batters. Then three hits in a row. Pitch is tight. Ball two, strike one. Probably the best left-handed pitcher ever to pitch here at the Fenway Park for the Red Sox was Mel Parnell. Yes, sir. And boy, he could run that little slider in on your hands as good as anybody. And you see Frank Tanana also having good success inside. This one right off the end of the bat. Ball two, strike two. Dwight Evans, what a career he's had here in Boston. He's gotten better over the last six, seven, eight years than he had his first uh, six or seven years. And he is a big favorite here at, uh, in Boston, does a lot of charity work in the community. He's waiting on the 2-2 pitch. And Tanana taking a little time. You don't make a mistake with this fella. He'll be out of play. Still ball two and strike two. No score in Baltimore. They played five. It's Malaki for Baltimore. Rich Dotson for the Yankees. The 2 2 pitch coming up to Dwight Evans. Ooh, it's way high. 3 and 2. Wade Boggs is the runner at first base. We'll see if he elects to run on the 3 2 pitch. Nope. a strikeout victim. Boggs was not running. Second out of the inning and it'll bring up Ellis Burks. Well if you're noted for having a good control and you can throw something other than a fastball when you're behind the count and you see what happens there that the hitter expecting the fastball and he goes for an off speed pitch that is out of the strike zone. The winningest pitcher in the major leagues today, Al, is Rick Russell. Another 40-year-old yes, performing like a kid. And he says uh, the further behind the count he, he gets, the slower he throws the ball. He won't throw the fastball if he, if he doesn't have to. He struck out Jack Clark four times on Sunday. Clark faced him five times. He got him out all five, but struck him out four times. Ellis Burke, good power, just a good ball block for him in uh, left center field, straightaway center field. Not very deep either spot. One strike to the big guy with a runner at first, two outs. The pitch from Tanana. Just missed. We'll make it one and one. Burke struck out in the second, struck out again in the fifth inning against Tanana. And this one's high. Ball two, strike one. Red Sox present you with some power in the center of the lineup. Greenwell, Evans, Burks, Asaski, they can all hit home runs. And you can see the breeze blowing slightly out the left field. This one's low. If Burks gets on, he'll have to face Asaski. All three strike one. 
And the pitch. He pops it up in the center field. Gary Pettis will put this one away, and the inning is over. At the end of six, the Tigers lead it 5-1. Well, here it is. This is our Bud Batters Box inning, and going for the prize will be Kathy Wallinga from Grand Rapids. Now, if a Tiger hits a home run this inning, Kathy, you're going to win $100 and a share of the $10,000 bonus at the end of the year. So, good luck to you, Kathy Wallinga of Grand Rapids. Well, we got the right ballpark for it, I think. We do have that. Dennis Lamp is the pitcher. He came in to relieve Boddicker in the sixth inning, and he's facing Mike Brumley leading off here in the seventh. And a strike. Boddicker pitched five and a third innings through 84 pitches. Two walks, two strikeouts. Hit a man. And allowed five runs. And gave up a home run. Ball, one strike to Mike Brumley. And a ground ball to second. Jody Reed, quick as a cat, picks it off. Well, the big question on the scoreboard in center field that went up can you name three Tigers that hit over 300 home runs? K line and Greenberg. And now Mr. Kaline tells me Norm Cash is the other one. Sure, Norm. Uh, had Norm been able to play a few more extra years for the Tigers, he would have been uh, the all-time leading home run hitter. He just didn't play enough years in Detroit. Here's Gary Pettis. 0 for 3. Twice he's hit the ball hard, very hard. And a pitch outside. One ball, one strike. Good swing on it. Makes it one and two. Means a whole lot to the Tigers when they can get this fellow on base. But he strikes out for the second out of the inning. So Dennis Lamp, who came on, gave up a single on the first pitch. That was to Pat Sheridan, has retired four in a row since then. Boy, he has to walk out on the mound against the Tigers with all kind of confidence with the success that he's had over the years against Detroit. Bergman takes it in tight. And the 1 and 0 pitch. That's a strike. Well, the Yankees are changing pitchers in the sixth inning in Baltimore. Rich Dodson had a shutout through five. Good breaking pitch in at the knees. One ball, two strikes. Dennis Lamp ready to go. A bouncer over his head. Jody Reed feels it, throws. He doesn't get him. He didn't have a chance, really. He was in shallow center field when he finally picked it off. Uh, he makes a great play. He doesn't have the type of arm that Lou Whitaker has. He throws the ball off balance. But uh, Bergman would have beaten it out anyhow. So it's a base hit for Bergman. And the batter is Whitaker, who's had a home run and a double tonight. He's batted in two. And he scored a couple of runs. We're in the seventh at Fenway Park in Boston. The Tigers five, the Red Sox one. 
One ball, one strike to Whitaker. Our next telecast will be Sunday in Detroit. The California Ball Club will be there. Number strike makes it one and two. Whitaker's home run went into the Tiger bullpen in deep right field. Round ball to Sharp. Rivera flips it on over to Jody Reed. We go to the bottom of the seventh, Detroit five and Boston one. no Tiger home runs in the seventh inning but because the Tiger reached base we're going to be sending our designated bud batter Kathy Wallinga from Grand Rapids a Budweiser jacket and cap and if you'd like to enter the contest you just send your name address and phone number to bud batters box post office box 13 239 St. Louis Missouri 63157 Masoski, the leadoff man, and he takes it low. He's bounced to third and thrown out by the catcher his last time up. And a ball hit in the left, just out of the reach of Warlow. So Sasky's on with a base hit. Throws a little uh, fastball there that's just out of the reach of Moreland, just under his glove. They put the leadoff man on in the sixth inning. Frank retired the next three. Now Asaski leads off here in the seventh, and the batter is Rick Cerrone. And he's hit the hard, hit the ball hard both times tonight. Is in tight to Cerrone. They can double him up. He, he's a catcher. He doesn't run that well. This one low ball two. Ball Hernandez, two. Uh, excuse me, George Hernandez, warming up in the bullpen now. Ball two, no strikes. Tigers lead by four here in the seventh inning. And time has been called. Enrique out to the bullpen. Means they want another pitcher to warm up. They have one going out there. They probably want another one. Charlie Hudson up now. The 2 0 pitch coming up to Cerrone. It's a strike. Rick taking all the way. Ball two, strike one. They are deep on the infield. They want to flag something down here. Only get two and two. Take a look at this pitch again. Looks like a little sinker right there. Straight change up. But Cerrone looking for something harder. Uh, Frank had him well out in front. He'd like to have that same pitch right now. And he's he foul tipping. Nope, he did not. Doing the same pitch back to back. Hello, Cerrone strikes out. Number seven tonight for Kanana. First out of the inning, and then bring up Luis Rivera. I wouldn't play too far back on this guy at first and third base. Uh, he does have a little power. He had four home runs in uh, Montreal last year. Moreland's going to play in close. Bergman's going to play behind a runner. In the first pitch to Rivera. He pops.
pops it up, but it'll be out of play. Bergie giving chase, and this one back in the crowd. Surprised more Red Sox haven't tried to bunt the ball and make Moreland field it. You know, Moreland hasn't played third base very often this year. One strike to the Red Sox shortstop. The pitch coming up from Tanana. It's a strike, strike two. Russell has relieved Nolan Ryan in Texas. Rangers leading 5 0. Luis Rivera waiting on the strike two pitch. And a fly ball into left. It's going to be caught in the corner by Sheridan. Oh, he only had a couple of steps back to the fence and picks it off. I really think he was further from the fence than he thought he was. Yeah, uh, Pat has about three or four more feet to go. You see that? That ball was almost on the ground. Of course, you don't have to hit it very far here at Fenway Park. And uh, Sheridan gets on a warning track. He thought he was closer to the fence and uh, jumps. And you see there he had another couple feet to go. Second out of the inning. That'll bring up Jody Reed. Jody Reed has struck out twice, single to run in his last time up. And he takes a strike. Sasky opened this inning with a base hit. He's still at first base. And the one strike pitch. It'll make it one and one. They play well behind a Sasky at first base. They don't figure he'll run. And here's one up the middle. It's going to be fielded by Brumley. The throw, he got him. Good play by Brumley, who went way behind the bag at second and throws out Jody Reed. At the end of seven, the Tigers lead it 5 1. Here come the Tigers in the eighth inning. Keith Borland, Matt Noakes, and Pat Sheridan will be the batters. Tigers lead by four. The pitch is outside from Dennis Lamp. Keith Moreland is hitless tonight. He's batted in a run, and he drills one into left. So Moreland gets his first hit tonight. The leadoff man is on in the eighth inning. Ball hits sharply. The shortstop dives. He loses his uh, glasses. You see there, good shot. Glasses flying off. There's Matthew, who's had two singles and a double. Well, the noise you hear in, is the wave been started here at Fenway Park, and it's been going on for quite a while. One ball, no strikes to Matt Noakes. As Dennis Lamp gets ready, it's outside ball two. Oh, it's about to wear out now. Whoop, that's the end of it. Nope. They pick it up in the bleachers. Oh, the college kids in center field, they'll keep it going. They got a lot of life. <laughs> Ball two, no strikes. Ball three. Three and oh to Matthew. Tigers trying to get something going against Dennis Lamp. Something they normally have trouble doing against this fellow. There's Joe Price. 
former National League pitcher with the Giants. There's a strike. All three strike one. Matthew batted in a run his last time up with a solid base hit the center. And another base hit for Matthew. Moreland makes the turn. He'll go to third as Matt Noakes gets his fourth hit tonight. Well, that's good to see. Matthew, who had been struggling at the plate for the last couple of uh, weeks, hitting the ball all over the place now. He's got a base hit to left field, one up the middle. Now he hits one in right center field. Good swing. He's always had a great swing, but he just gets in the habit of trying to pull the ball too much and rifles the ball in the right center field. Keith Moreland goes from first to third. And the batter is Sheridan, who had a base hit off Lamp when he came into the ball game. Pitch is low. Pat Sheridan has singled twice tonight. Batted in a run in the fourth inning. The infield is in tight with nobody out. And a base hit in the right. Matthews going to hold it second, and he may be out. Oh, he barely got back. Matthew never at any time intended to go to third. I don't know why he took such a big lead. Well, he probably was told why he didn't, because he didn't go to second base on that base hit in the first inning, and he rounds the bag and almost gets thrown out at second base. Ma Pat Sheridan again rifles the ball past the drawn-in infield. Oh, there's, a, there's the advantage of hitting with the infield in. That ball would have been an out if the second baseman was back, but he just had no time to react, and look at this. He's just able to get back. Chester Lemon, the batter, with two on, still nobody out. And the pitch outside to Lemon. Well, you could see Matthew slow up as he got to second, which indicated he was going to stop there. Then he made a big turn. And Kutcher almost picked him up. This may be a double play. It will be. Taylor made double play right at Jody Reed, who flips it over to Rivera. As balls hit hard, and you see they're playing in close. This is a routine double play. This is the kind you pray for. Good bounce right to the second baseman. On to third goes Matthew, and the batter is Mike Heath. And Mike fouls it away. Six to one, the Tigers lead it. We're in the eighth inning. And a ground ball to third. Easy play for Boggs, and the inning is over. Tigers get a run. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Six to one, Detroit. New ball player, Al. Yeah, the new third baseman, uh, Keith Moreland, out of the game. Rick Chu now in defensively. Tigers with a five-run lead, trying to get their best people uh, in the field. And Rick Chu now playing at uh, third base. And the leadoff batter will be Kutcher. He'll be followed by Boggs and then Greenwell. Six to one, the Tigers lead it. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. The pitcher's inside to Kutcher. He uh, struck out, flied to center, and bounced to the mound. Frank Tanana delivers, and a long fly ball into left center. This one's going to be high off the wall, and a two-base hit for Kutcher. It's a third straight inning. They put the leadoff man on base. Well, this ball's hit a long ways. There's a little breeze blowing towards left field. The ball hit, oh, halfway or so up. Pettis fields it on one bounce, a two-base hit for Randy Kutcher. And the batter is Boggs, who's had a couple of hits tonight. 
There's a strike. He got a curveball over. Boggs was out on a good play by Moreland his first time up. Then he singled in the fourth and singled again in the sixth inning. Six to one, the Tigers lead. We're in the eighth inning. So Nana taking a little time, delivers to box. It's outside. One ball, one strike. And the pitch. And another pickoff by Bergman to throw. He got him. Another fine play by Bergman, who went far to his right to get the ground ball off the batter box. Oh, he did, and he got rid of the ball right away, and uh, Frank Banana had to run to the ball because he knew it was going to be a close play at first base. This ball was hit sharply, and Berge, on the run, makes a good play, and he just fires the ball to first base. Now Frank has to run to the bag and makes a good play. On the third goes Kutcher. With one out, and the batter is Greenwell. Mike Greenwell has had a hit tonight, and he takes a strike. He's had a base hit, and twice he has drilled the ball deep to right field. Nana delivers and a chopper down the first baseline. They're going to have to hurry to get him, and they do. Oh, Bergman just beat the speedy Greenwell at first base. Yeah, he beat out a base hit last night, uh, similar to that, uh, to the first baseman who had to flip to the to the pitcher. But this time, the ball's closer to the bag, and he's able to field it and then make the tag himself. And in the score comes Kutcher. It's a six to two ball game. And the batter is Evans. Bergman with two fine plays here in the eighth inning. Pitch coming up to Dwight Evans and he hits a fly ball in the center. Gary Pettis will pick it off. They got a run in the inning at the end of eight. The Tigers lead it six to two. Well, we're going to take a look at the Greater Michigan and Metro Detroit Ford Dealers American League scoreboard. Baltimore leads the Yankees one to nothing in the seventh. Toronto two to nothing over Milwaukee in the fourth. Minnesota has a 7-6 lead over Seattle in the sixth inning. Chicago 3, Cleveland nothing in the fifth. Oakland, Kansas City 1-1 in the fourth. And Texas a winner, 5-1 over California in game one of that doubleheader. Nolan Ryan gets the win in Texas. Mike Remley, the leadoff man. And the pitch from left is a strike on the outside corner. Makes it one and two. Mike's had a walk tonight. 0 for 2 on the evening. As Dennis Lamp gets ready. And the count goes even at two and two. We're in the ninth inning. Tigers six. Boston two. All three. Three and two to Brumley. Our next telecast will be Sunday in Detroit. The California Angels will be in town. And he walked him. He had two strikes on Brumley with only one ball, and he walked him. Well, I would imagine they will try to play for one run here. Pettis, so even though he's been hitting the ball sharply, I would try to move Brumley, who has good speed, over to second base and hope they can get pick up one more run. Yeah, they got a couple of left-handed batters coming up. Nobody throwing in the Boston bullpen at the moment, but I think Joe Price is getting up. There goes the runner. Throw to second. 
Safe! A stolen base for Brumley. That's the quickest way to get him to second. Take a look at the pitch again. Pettis is uh, like faking the punt, uh, the bunt, the throw to second base in the dirt, and Mike's just able to get the foot in there. That's the third stolen base for Brumley this year. One ball, no strikes to Pettis. Oh, he bunks it in the air, but he can't get it. One ball, one strike. Well, the play here is for the left-handed batter, Pettis, to just bunt the ball right to Boggs. Sharply, if you want to. Just make him come in a step or two, and Brumley walks to third base. This one's high. This is a tough play for a runner. Yeah, I always is, found it tough, This out. is a play that you see most of the time uh, when a player is picked off. It's usually on a bunt situation where a hitter will bunt through the ball, misses it, and you know, the base runner normally instinct is to lean towards third base, and that's when they a lot of times are picked off at second base. Ball two, strike one. Here's a good bunt. Right to Boggs. Boy, Gary Pettis did exactly what you're supposed to do. He made Boggs field it. Nobody home at third, and Brumley walked over. Perfect execution. This is George Kell mentioned. You bunt the ball to third base. There's nobody left to cover third. He fields it and throws the ball to first base. The runner walks in the third base here comes the manager Joe Morgan he has a left-hander uh, price who had been uh, warming up and looks like they made the call for the left-hander from the bullpen this is the hardest I've ever seen the Tigers hit uh, Dennis Lamp take a look at it again here's the sacrifice he bunts it hard enough where it gets past the pitcher and Boggs has to field the ball So he's bringing the left-hander in, Joe Price. Tigers have Bergman and then Whitaker coming up. And while there's a break in the action, with the Tigers leading 6-2, to two, we're going to pause for these messages. We're going to pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. You can catch the latest highlights and scores with Scott Wally. That's tonight at 11, only on the News 4 Night Beat. And the new pitcher is Joe Price, who has spent eight years in the major leagues, all in the National League, many of those with Cincinnati, the last couple with San Francisco. He was released from San Francisco May the 1st. He had appeared in seven games with San Francisco, where he had a, a one and one record. Hasn't been doing all that well uh, for the Red Sox, he has pitched in eight games, 28 innings, allowed 24 hits and 11 runs. He's 0-2 with the Red Sox. He's pitching to Berkman with a runner at third, one out in the ninth. David takes it high. Berge has walked tonight, scored a run, then he singled his last time up. And he had a good swing at it. Fouls it away. Very important that Bergman put the ball in play. The infield is in very tight. They don't have much of a chance unless it's hit right at them. Runner at third is Brumley. He's there with one out. And another foul ball. Uh, Berge's had two good cuts. He has two two good pitches to hit. Uh, fastballs that were up and out over the plate. Now he has to choke down on the bat or choke up on the bat and try to put the ball in play. One ball, two strikes. And a ground ball up the middle. It's going to get the run in and safe at first. Jody Reed made a whale of a play to come up with it. Then he couldn't get it out of his glove and Bergman beat it out. 
sir. This ball is hit. A uh, good piece of hitting you see there. He had a good pitch. The ball was low and away. Jody makes a great play. And then all of a sudden, he couldn't get the ball out of his glove. And, and Berge hustling all the way gets a base hit. They scored a base hit. You're right. Yeah, this is a good hit. It was a good play just to make the play. The batter is Whitaker. Blues had a home run and a double tonight. He has scored two and batted in two. And the Tigers lead it seven to two. Big run here at Fenway Park. You never know what can happen here with this small ballpark. You, ne you can never get enough runs. One ball, one strike. This inning started with a walk. A stolen base, a sacrifice, then the single by Bergman. Well, Hernandez has been throwing throughout this inning, so he possibly be, could be coming in the, in the last inning. Lou takes it in tight. Ball three. Ball three, strike one. They've got a right-hander throwing in the Boston bullpen. Lou pops it high in the air. Jody Reed behind second will pick it off. That's the second out of the inning, and Rick Shue will bat for the first time tonight. Rick Shue got into the ball game in the eighth inning as a replacement for Moreland. This one bounces up there. Rick uh, made his first error of the season uh, for the Tigers last night. That's not the reason why he didn't start this game. He has been struggling at the plate. And Sparky Anderson wanted to try to get some more offense in there, moving uh, Keith Moreland to third base. One ball, no strikes to shoot. And a strike evens the count at one and one. The Tigers have 14 hits tonight. They've had 40 hits in the last three games. Forty hits in the last three games, Al, and uh, unless they win tonight, no wins to show for the 40 hits. Right. They lost in Toronto on Monday here last night. Bouncer to third. Boggs goes to second, and the inning is over. We go to the bottom of the ninth. The Tigers lead it 7 to 2. Well, we have a new pitcher, Guillermo Fernandez, trying to preserve the uh, sixth win of the year for Frank Tanana, who uh, just doing an excellent job for the uh, Tigers allowing just two runs on eight hits. There's the record for Hernandez. Two wins and one loss. Has 12 saves on the year. Guillermo uh, hurt his arm a little bit up in uh, Toronto, but it's able to bounce back. I guess it was just a little stiff and uh, couldn't get loose, but he has done a good job for the Tigers this year, and some way he's been able to find, uh, the refine that screwball of his and, and getting it over the plate, so. Trying to get him out here in the ninth inning. He'll be facing Ellis Burks, Asaski, and Cerrone as we look at Joe Morgan and now look at Sparky. Really a helpless feeling for both men. Joe Morgan says, I need some runs, and Sparky looking for somebody to get him out here in the ninth. Ellis Burks has struck out twice and fly to center field today. On the first pitch, it's high. One ball, no strikes to the leadoff man. Ball two. Two and out of Burks. Tigers have seven runs on 14 hits. Boston two runs on eight. All three. Hanneman's up going in the bullpen now for Detroit. 
Ball three, no strikes to the leadoff man. And a strike, he threw it right down the middle. He sure did, didn't throw much on it either. He throw the same pitch to Burks here and uh, he might hit the ball someplace. Strike two. Ball three, strike two to Burks. Guillermo getting ready and the payoff pitch. Now Burke steps out. And we'll do it again. This is a base hit into the corner. Gonna be extra bases for Burke. So ground rule double up. Nope, no ground rule double. He just trots in the second. Saw the leadoff man is at second. And the batter will be a Sasky. Well, you don't expect uh, Ellis Burke to hit the ball to right field, but you get the high fastball and lines it uh, right over the bag. Uh, first base and third base in a situation like this will play off the line because most balls are hit in the hole. This time, uh, hit the ball right down the right field line. Nick Kosaski, he's had a single in this game, and he takes a strike. Tigers lead by five. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning. Strike two to Asaski. Tigers play here again tomorrow night. Then they come home for the weekend. California will be in town. Strike three call. Nick Asaski caught looking. He's the first out of the inning. Well, I think they must have told uh, Nick that look out for his screwball and take a look at it again. Fastball right down the middle of the plate. And the batter is Rick Cerrone. He's had a single score to run in this game. Guillermo ready. And a strike. California will be in town Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday afternoon. And as Al told you, we'll see young Mr. Abbott on Saturday. My Keith. Stepping out to say something to Guillermo. Well, I think he, what he told him was to make sure you stop. No big deal right now, but uh, you know, there's no sense in moving the base runner over. The 1 1 pitch to Cerrone. It's a ball. Ball two, strike one. They're in the eighth inning in Baltimore. One to nothing. The Orioles lead the Yankees. That's Malecki pitching for Baltimore. Boy, he's looked good against the Tigers. Every time they've seen him. A 2-1 pitch coming up. This one's fouled out of play. Guillermo Hernandez on here in the night trying to wrap it up for Frank Tonano. He fell behind the leadoff man Burks 3 and 0 went to 3 and 2 gave up a base hit a double then he struck out a Sasky. Now it's 2 and 2 to Rick Cerrone. The 2 2 pitch. This one's into the corner. On the run is Sheridan. He can't get it. It's going to be a double for Cerrone. And it's a 7-3 ball game. Well, Cerrone, who has been hitting left-handers extremely well this season, gets a fastball on the inner half of the plate. 
Lines it hard down the line in left field. Looked like Sheridan was going to make the play, but the ball was over his head too high, and you see Ellis Burks waiting to see if the ball was uh, caught by Sheridan. Scores easily from second base. And the batter's Rivera, who's had a base hit tonight. Red Sox now have 10 hit. And this pop fly down the line and right will drift into the crowd. A double by Burks and a double by Cerrone getting the run in here in the ninth. Guillermo gets ready in the one strike pitch. That's the screwball and a good one. He caught the little shortstop way out in front. Thirty two thousand six hundred fifty six in the old ballpark tonight. Thirty two six five six. The two strike pitch coming up to Rivera. And another foul ball. Red Sox on the year have drawn eight hundred seventy five thousand nine fifty eight. And they're saying very much like Detroit, the weather has not been good here at all early in the year. This is a big out right here for Guillermo. He wants to get this little guy before he goes to the top of the batting order. On a couple of screwballs, uh, let's see if he doesn't uh, rear back and try to throw the fastball by him. It's strike two on him. Ooh, he almost hit him. One ball, two strikes. If he'd have been able to get that one over, he had him out. The little guy was looking for a breaking pitch, it looked like. One and two as Guillermo gets ready. And another foul ball. Only one out here in the ninth. Runner at second. A couple of doubles producing a run. And the one two pitch to Rivera. It's going to be a tough play, and they're not going to get him. There was uh, Brumley going on that ball. He was running towards second base when the ball was hit. It'll be an infield single for Rivera. He takes a couple steps uh, towards second base and then has to go back. And just no way you're going to get the uh, speedy Rivera at first base. I think he probably saw the sign from the catcher of screwball expected him to go to right field. So they have two on with one out for Jody Reed. single tonight in four trips. Two on and one out. And a strike evens the count at one and one. Jody Reed is a tough man to double up now. He runs extremely well. High ball, too. Ball two, strike one. Tigers have a left hander and a right hander in the bullpen. This one's fouled out of play. See the Tiger bullpen. 
That's Henneman, the right-hander, and Gibson, the left-hander. Henneman's ready. Gibson just got up. Ball two, strike two as Guillermo delivers, and he hit him on the fist, and he fouls it away. Guillermo has made some good pitches. Rivera fouled off a couple of good ones with two strikes on him, and Jody Reed just got a piece of that one. Tigers lead by five, by four now. That goes the bat in one direction, the ball in the other. Seven to three, the Tigers lead it. They've picked up a run here in the ninth. on the tying run comes to the plate. All three strike two. And he pops it up. Gary Pettis will handle this one. So Guillermo gets a big out as Jody Reed skies it into center field for the second out of the inning. And it'll all be up to Randy Kutcher. Randy Kutcher drilled one off the wall in left center his last time up. Ken Kaiser signaling for Mike Heath to come on back behind the plate. had gone to the mound to talk to Guillermo. Two on, two outs. Tigers lead by four. And a foul ball. One strike to Kutcher. Getting ready. A one strike pitch. That'll make it one and one. This inning started with a double, then a strikeout, then another double, a single, and a fly ball for the second out. And a ground ball to short. That'll be the ball game. Randy Kutcher bounces into a force play. The final score of the game. The Tigers 7, Boston 3, and we'll be right back. Well, our Budweiser Tiger player of the game is Matthew Noakes. Matthew had four hits tonight. Pat Sheridan had three singles. Lou Whitaker had a home run and a double, but Matthew Noakes getting his first four-game hit of the season is our Budweiser Tiger player of the game. So good luck to you, Matthew Noakes. Well, the Tigers win it 7-3. to three. They had seven runs on 14 hits, no errors. Frank Tanana gets the win. He's won six, lost six on the year. Boston had three runs, 11 hits, and no errors. For Al Kaline and Scott Wally, this is George Kell, hoping you'll be with us this Sunday at 1 o'clock when the Tigers take on the California Angels. Once again, the final score tonight, the Tigers 7, Boston 3.
Tigers baseball has been brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And presented by your Greater Michigan and Metro Detroit four dealers, where their commitment to quality makes them number one. Tigers baseball, another reason why WDIV is first for sports. 